findings. And what we're going to look at here from the University of Iowa virtual microscope is the uh, inferior vena cava, which is the largest, I suppose, of the veins. And uh, we're looking at it initially here at very low magnification. This is just a little bit uh, magnified, about 1.25x. Uh, so what I recommend we do is we'll go into about uh, 5x, and we'll take a look at the various layers of which this uh, vessel is made up. And then maybe we'll look at a little higher magnification than that again. So as we see here, we can't see the full thickness of the wall. This here is the endothelial surface, which is in contact with blood. Uh, from here to the tip of the arrowhead here is the tunica intima. And we can see the boundary between the tunica intima and tunica media is this fairly distinct thickened layer of elastic tissue called the internal elastic lamina. Uh, then the bulk of the screen here is taken up with the tunica media, as we can see all the way over to here. And if I scroll through, we can see that the tunica media continues all the way out here to where the tunica adventitia would be. Uh, along this segment of the vessel here, the tunica adventitia has been ripped off. If I slide down along the vessel a little bit further to somewhere where some of the adventitia is left, you can see here that the adventitia is made of just some sort of patchy uh, connective tissue. So returning to where I was and going back into the tunica intima and then the tunica media, so if we go for around here, and now what I would like to do is to uh, increase the magnification here up to 10x and we can look at the structure of the wall. So at 10x magnification, the surface on which the endothelial cells are located is along this uh, surface here. This is probably the nucleus of uh, an endothelial cell. And the tunica intima extends from the endothelial surface to this distinct internal elastic lamina, which you can see here. If you're relatively good at histology, you'll immediately have noticed a uh, feature of the tunica intima of this particular uh, large vein, and it's present in some of the other larger veins as well, and that is it can contain uh, small to um, fairly moderate amounts of uh, smooth muscle, and we can see here some smooth muscle nuclei of smooth muscle fibers. The smooth muscle cells in the tunica intima are oriented uh, longitudinally. Here's another, and here's another. So small amounts of uh, smooth muscle to moderate amounts of smooth muscle embedded in a fairly loose connective tissue uh, matrix. You can see some of it here and some connective tissue here. And then we have the distinct internal elastic lamina. You don't really see an IEL in most veins, but you do in the very large ones. And then inside that, we see the tunica media. The first part of the tunica media in the uh, inferior vena cava is actually consists of bundles of smooth muscle cells which are oriented um, longitudinally, that is, with their long axis parallel to the long axis of the vessel. And as a consequence, in a vessel cross-section like this, the smooth muscle cells are cut in cross-section. And here we see the nuclei of these smooth muscle cells. There's a, a bundle of smooth muscle cells here and a bundle of smooth muscle cells here. And so the region in which we find longitudinally oriented smooth muscle extends from about here to the internal elastic lamina or over here from here to the uh, internal elastic lamina. Outside of that particular layer of longitudinally oriented smooth muscle, the bulk of the tunica media in the IVC, which we can see in here, is made up of um, moderately dense connective tissue, uh, mainly um, collagenous connective tissue, type 1 collagen. There are some smooth muscle cells embedded among this collagenous connective tissue, and the orientation of these smooth muscle cells is roughly circular, but they don't form very well organized bundles. The cells tend to be sort of scattered, and there's a very large amount of this pink homogenous looking collagenous connective tissue uh, between the uh, individual smooth muscle cells or small groups. And then finally, in large veins like this one, there's a reasonably significant amount of uh, elastic lamellae or elastic tissue that's found in the tunica media. And we see this here as the intensely dark stained uh, lines that represent the elastic lamellae, with, of course, the uh, best of the uh, elastic lamellae being this rather distinct internal elastic lamina. And that pretty much concludes the wall structure of very large veins, in this example, the inferior vena cava. So if we have an opportunity to compare uh, similarly sized uh, arteries and veins, uh, these would be medium sized muscular artery and sort of a similar sized uh, accompanying vein. And on this section, there are actually, or on the slide, there are four sections. There is a hematoxylin and eosin stained muscular artery, medium sized artery, and then an equivalent sized vein approximately, also hematoxylin and eosin stained. And then for comparative purposes, the same 
uh, artery and vein are also present on the slide, but this time they've been stained to uh, demonstrate elastic tissue or elastic fibres. To give an opportunity to compare between the two, you'll recall that you can't see elastic tissue or elastic fibres specifically in hematoxylin and eosin stained sections, and so it requires special stain in order to be able to look at the uh, location and disposition of elastic fibres. So now let's begin by taking a look at the uh, artery which we can see here and we'll zoom in in magnification uh, probably to around um, begin with going to 2.5x and move the pointer over so that we're sitting on the wall of the vessel and so here's the uh, medium-sized artery this is the surface on which the blood will flow so that's the endothelial surface and the tunica intima is in here and then the bulk of the uh, vessel wall here is composed of tunica media and then the outer part, the tunica adventitia, the connective tissue that makes up the outer part, is this material here, but not all of it, because the adventitia of vessels tends to blend with the connective tissue that surrounds the other uh, tissues and organs in the vicinity. And so if we uh, were to move, unfortunately, this um, section, the complete section isn't on the slide, but if we move over a little bit so that we can get some sort of a sense as to this is about half the diameter or a little more than half of the diameter of the lumen here and we can see that the wall thickness if you were to judge it is about half of that so the thickness of the wall in comparison to the lumen diameter is about at one fourth in a medium sized uh, artery like this one alternatively if we go over here to the vein uh, the first thing that we'll notice is that the lumen um, appears to be um, very much smaller than that of the artery but in fact this isn't the case uh, what's happened is that because there's so little muscle in the wall of the vein the vein collapses when it's not filled with blood and so although the lumen looks um, smaller in fact if you track the lumen from one side of the vessel here and again the whole of the section isn't on this particular scan slide but if we tracked it over here and if we imagine this uh, inflated what we would see is that in fact the lumen of a vein is normally larger than the lumen of the artery which the vein uh, accompanies. Nonetheless, we can still use this to compare um, wall thickness approximately. Again, if we looked here at the full thickness of the wall here, and even if we were to compare it to uh, the width of the lumen following down along here, and if we go to about the uh, halfway point, which would be around here, we would see that the thickness of the wall in the vein is about one-eighth or so of the uh, diameter of the lumen and so the wall thickness of veins is correspondingly thinner or relatively thinner than that of the arteries which they would um, accompany. And now if we move back to the artery and we'll increase magnification a little bit we can take a look and see what the fine structure of the wall uh, looks like. And in this case we're going to go to uh, 10x magnification And here we are at uh, 10x magnification, and we'll begin here on the uh, luminal surface, which is uh, this surface along here. This is the surface that's lined by endothelium. Uh, there's an endothelial cell nucleus here, and there's one here, and there's one here. Perhaps this is one here. So that's the endothelial surface. And then beneath that, as you know, there's the tunica intima, which is made up of varyingly uh, layers, uh, varying, layers of varying thickness of, of um, loose connective tissue, of course the endothelial cell basement membrane. It's not really possible to make out the exact dimensions of the tunica intima here because the boundary between tunica intima and tunica media, which is the internal elastic lamina, uh, isn't visible. But from looking at the other specimen which has been stained to demonstrate elastic fibers, the tunica intima here extends just about this uh, distance here. The bulk of the specimen is made up of the tunica media, so extending across here, and the tunica media is made up of circumferentially oriented or circularly oriented smooth muscle cells. Their nuclei are these dark things which you can see here. If you were to look at higher magnification, the nuclei are characteristically corkscrew shaped. And these smooth muscle cells are embedded in uh, connective tissue which contains varying degrees of uh, elastic fibers in large elastic arteries, the connective tissue uh, weight for weight uh, exceeds that of the uh, smooth muscle cells. In medium-sized muscular uh, arteries like this, there's far less elastic uh, connective tissue, but there's still some, and we'll see this uh, in just a moment uh, when we move from uh, this specimen here at the magnification we're looking at. Again, tunica intima, tunica media, and out here the connective tissue of the tunica adventitia. 
And if we now uh, move to the specimen <coughs> just beneath this, which has been stained with a uh, stain which highlights elastic uh, tissue and elastic fibers, we would see the following. So there's a very intense uh, staining of uh, elastic material, what looks like on the uh, luminal surface. And in fact, the, uh, the stain does stain the endothelium, but it also stains the internal elastic lamina, which you can see reasonably well here. So we can see that the tunica intima here is actually uh, quite narrow and quite small, and that's um, average and normal for um, the uh, smaller, uh, medium-sized muscular arteries. The tunica media then extends from the tunica intima all the way out to the tunica adventitia. And because this has been stained to demonstrate elastic fibers, we don't see smooth muscle cell nuclei or smooth muscle cells. And in fact, we don't see the collagen terribly well. It's the uh, pale pinky material, which we can see here. But we can see elastic lamellae and elastic fibers, which have been deposited between the circumferentially oriented layers of uh, smooth muscle. And then finally, the tunica adventitia, which we see out here, uh, components of the tunica adventitia, the connective tissue stain intensely um, uh, with the stain that uh, highlights elastic fibers and some of the stained material here are elastic fibers and some of the stained material is just uh, material that picks up elastic stain sort of non-specifically. So that's the artery. And now if we go and look at the wall of the corresponding vein and we'll begin by looking at the H and E stained uh, wall of the vein. So let's look here. So here we see the uh, tunica, see, we see the endothelial surface. There's an endothelial nucleus. Uh, here's an endothelial nucleus. The vein will also have a tunica intima, and in this case it'll be as small as, or maybe even a little smaller, uh, than is the tunica intima of the corresponding artery. The key features here are the tunica media, extending from here uh, out to about here where the tunica adventitia begins. And you can see that about half of the tunica media that we see here is composed almost entirely of fairly dense collagenous connective tissue with some occasional fibroblast nuclei or maybe even a uh, smooth muscle cell, the odd occasional smooth muscle cell scattered uh, in between. In the outer part of the tunica media, so in the region that we see here, we see these bundles of material here. And these bundles are smooth muscle cells which have been cut in cross-section. And the fact that they're cut in cross-section indicates that these smooth muscle cells are oriented longitudinally with respect to the long axis of the vessel. So they're arrayed along the, the length of the, uh, of the vessel. So what we have then in this accompanying vein is a very small tunica intima and a tunica media in which we have dense collagenous uh, connective tissue with maybe some scattered individual smooth muscle cells and fibroblasts, and then one or more layers of smooth muscle organized in bundles which are oriented longitudinally with respect to the long axis of the vessel. And finally, if we go to the elastic stained uh, version of the um, uh, venous vessel, we'll see something that looks like this. Again, the tunica intima is uh, in here, and then we go to the uh, tunica media, which extends across here. And in a medium-sized vein like this, as I said, the, about half or maybe even more than half of the tunica media is made up of dense collagenous connective tissue with very little elastic fibers and those that there are are oriented again longitudinally with respect to the axis of the vessel. And then as we move out into the region where we saw the bundles of smooth muscle cells oriented longitudinally, we see a little more of the uh, elastic tissue but again it's also oriented uh, longitudinally with respect to the vessel. And so on this slide, what we've been able to see uh, as we looked around is the uh, see and compare a um, muscular uh, artery with an accompanying vein. And we've been able to see what the uh, disposition and distribution of elastic fibers is in the muscular artery versus that in the accompanying muscular vein.